Hi, this is Nancy Hendrickson. Uh, this video, and you're going to find it to be very static, we're not going to actually move off of this mind map in this uh, number one of a series of videos, but I want to talk about the process of writing a nonfiction article or essay or even a flash nonfiction piece. I want to talk about the process and what I go through to create um, an article using all of the senses. Because when you use all of your senses, you're really drawing a reader into the experience. And it's actually more important that the reader have the experience than you're constantly tell them, telling them your experience. Now, a lot of times I will start with photographs because I, whenever I travel, I do a lot of photography. And if I'm stuck on, you know, how to write the article or what's the key little piece of the article, I'll go back look through my images and I almost always will find something that kicks off a little creative synapse up there and gets me going. Other times I use a mind map like you're seeing here and by the way this is this program is called Simple Mind and this is a desktop version but there's also mobile versions and you can sync them so I can work on this on my iPad and then sync it up with my desktop so I'll have the same version going. So this article I'm working on is about Fort Robinson, Nebraska. Fort Robinson is the place where the Lakota warrior Crazy Horse surrendered and the place where he also was killed. Today uh, the state of Nebraska runs Fort Robinson as it's a state-run historic site and they rent out what were the old officers quarters on the parade ground as well as the enlisted men's barracks they rent it out to people as a you know a place to come stay uh, I've stayed at the enlisted men's barracks and had kind of the worst sleep of my life uh, I think the beds were probably from 1900 but anyway I wanted to capture something about Fort Robinson and what it really meant to me and it was a, a really kind of a bizarre ju juxtaposition for me to know as much about Crazy Horse's history as I do know and then see how that place is used today. So let me just go over a couple of things so you can understand what I'm talking about. So I started with my central theme of Fort Robinson and all I did is I, uh, in, in addition to taking photos while I travel, I also take a lot of notes. So I went back through my notebook and these were all things I had jotted down. Uh, the officer's row, there it's uh, lined with elm trees, but it was cottonwoods and the leaves are very reflective. So they're, they're beautiful when they move in the wind. There are magpies. If you've never seen a magpie, they have an immense tail. They're kind of cool. Levi Robinson, uh, he's the, uh, the young man who was killed, the soldier that Robinson was named after. Uh, the night sky, it is incredibly black out there and you can just see the Milky Way streaming across the sky. And at that particular time that I was there, Sagittarius was, was really beautifully visible in the southern sky. In terms of the critters, uh, horrible black flies that drew blood, black butterfly on these flowers that are white cups, and I almost always will buy books when I travel showing me what flowers, plants, animals are indigenous to an area. Never could find these white cups anywhere. Beetles. Uh, the part that's most important to me though were kind of these two areas. Um, it's Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse and his band of about 900 people rode down out of the Pine Bluffs, which you can still see. They're quite evident behind Fort Robinson. And I put Magnificent Array because everything I've read about them coming in was that it was more like a victory parade than someone riding in to surrender. And his band was starving, which is the reason they came into the fort. I wanted to talk about the spirits. There is a incredible, in fact, as I'm talking to you about it, I'm getting goosebumps. There's an incredible sense of spirits there. Every afternoon, the wind kicks up and you almost feel like Crazy Horse is just riding through that fort on the wind. And I put Old Red Cloud Agency in Hawk 
Old Red Cloud Agency is down the road from the fort, and it's where uh, a lot of uh, Indians were kept uh, as they came in to surrender. And I never forget the story of my sister and a friend of ours named Jim who were walking from Fort Robinson down to the Old Red Cloud Agency, and a hawk swooped right at their knee level. And Hawk was Crazy Horse's spirit animal. And Jim said that he fully expected three Lakota warriors to ride up and offer to take him with him. So it, it is a very ghostly place out there. So what does this have to do with me writing the article? Well, I've got all my senses going with the butterflies, the cottonwood trees, the Milky Way, uh, Crazy Horse. I, I did also put Commander was Calhoun's brother. Uh, the person who was commanding Fort Robinson at that time happened to be the brother of one of Custer's officers uh, killed the year previous at the Little Bighorn. So clearly there was no love loss between him and Crazy Horse. But what I wanted to show you is if you look at all these things, Hawk is connected to Crazy Horse, the wind, the spirits, and the old red cloud agency. Of all of the items I have on this mind map, Hawk is the one that actually has the most connections. It's most interconnected to other things. So as I'm struggling with how do I want to start this article, I realize the Hawk is going to be the key that kind of flies me into the piece. So I'm going to end this video here and I'll be doing another one very shortly as I move forward with trying to get the introduction to this essay or article written. And right now I'm not even sure if it's a travel piece, an essay, um, a, mem a type of travel memoir. I'm not even sure where I'm going with it, but I just want to show you the anatomy of how a piece of writing is created. Hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, email me, uh, nancy at nancyhendrickson.com.